So we got our goat strung up. Tom here is working on, on making the initial cut. He's going to try to cut down the belly uh, just through the hide. Not Be careful not to hit the, the muscle underneath and very sure not to penetrate into the, the, the stomach and the guts and everything. Otherwise that might taint the meat. So he's just going to slowly work that down and come all the way down the chest cavity, work to the side of the, the, the uh, testicles here and the, the penis. He's going to stay to this side and not cut anything in there and then just open that up all the way down as far as he can, pulling that hide away from the muscle. We want to try to leave the, any fat on the animal still attached to the, the meat. So he's just going to continue working here and then uh, once he gets that opened up and then we'll actually open up the chest cavity and then pull out all the, the, the entrails. Here we want to make sure we don't go in too far and cut open any of the organs. Um, but most of them have settled down into his chest cavity. Yeah. That's why I was asking about the... Uh, but you can see all that. If his anus was... Really, we want to try to... Um, if you have a knife with a gut hook, this is pretty That's easy. where you bring it out? Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to try and get our fingers behind there and push his guts back without stabbing ourselves. But it's a hard time with this knife, so I'm going to just... Push him back while I work this. It's really important that we don't cut into anything here, his stomach, because that'll taint the meat. And see how easy it is to open him up. I'm just barely touching yep. him with my knife, and it's just sliding open. Having a sharp knife is definitely helpful. smell. He cut up with his guts. It smells a lot worse. <laughs> Stricker is all about it. Got a kind of a diaphragm here. Got a diaphragm. Oh, that muscle right there. It's more like a little bit of in there, we take water and flush it out. Okay. It's all Your stomach. Taint the meat is... It will if you get a lot. Yeah. Uh, or if you let it sit on there too long. So we might take some water and flush it off. Okay. Go ahead, Michael. Cut away this connective tissue. And everything should fall out. Again, we just gotta be careful not to cut the stomach. Heart, lungs, kidney, you trying to save any of that? Yeah. Really up here we're into um, the major organs, the heart and the lungs. Yeah. There's nothing if you cut into into that stuff, yeah. it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Um, because it's all edible meat. Yeah. It's really the stomach yeah. and stuff down here that you gotta be careful about. And then I'm gonna I'm down to his, pretty much just his esophagus. Yeah, and that's the last cut? Yeah, I'm gonna go cut his esophagus off right now. Okay. So everything should fall out after that. Um, it's pretty tight. But later we want to make sure that we get the rest of his esophagus out. Yeah. Because that's an organ. A lot of people will forget about it. And it'll it'll be good to the meat All right. in that area. There you go. 
So what we're going to do, if it's a wild animal, we're going to find its liver and make sure there's no big Worms. white spots all over it. Um, especially like small game, rabbits, rodents. They if worms. they have a disease, their liver here will be spotted. Okay. So liver looks good, animal's healthy. If it is spotted, like it has a disease, then we're going to uh, wash everything off really well and throw everything away because we don't want the disease. You mean the entire animal? The whole animal. Okay. Because it's, yeah, it's all diseased. Okay. So we finished skinning that goat and we're going to take that hide and put it in a lye bath so we can get all the, the hair off of it. And uh, I, what I've done is I've taken a bunch of ash from our fire pit and put it in this bucket and mixed it with water. That makes lye uh, a lye solution. And we're going to let it sit in this bath for about two days and we'll stir it occasionally and then the hair should all come off. That'll just give us the plain hide. Uh, this will stain your hide, so if you wanted to do a nice hide, this is not the way to do it. But we're just going to make rope out of this hide, so I don't really care about the color. So I'm going to go get that hide now and put it in here. Make sure that all this water uh, and ash covers that hide. If not, then I'll have to add some more ash and water. So I've got the goat shed. I'm just gonna put it inside since we do have coyotes and bear out here. Hopefully it'll keep any animals out of it while this, this cures. So we're processing the goat over here. We've cut off some of the pieces of meat that we want to keep to eat uh, today. Uh, we had took off the back strap and the tenderloin and one of the legs and we're roasting over the fire. But what I got here is the start of a drying rack. Uh, got the structure built. We're gonna put some smaller twigs across here, branches, so that we can lay strips of the meat that we've cut thinly on top of there and it's gonna smoke them. I'm gonna take a tarp and put it around the top so it traps in some of the heat and the smoke that will add flavor. We'll season the meat with some salt and uh, some garlic powder probably and maybe some peppers. Um, all those will help draw the moisture out of the meat and uh, garlic has kind of got an, anti um, an antibacterial property that will kill any bacteria that might get, get on the meat. Now we don't want to actually cook this meat, the jerky. What we want to do is just uh, dry it out. So we don't want it to get over 150 degrees. We're not going to have a thermometer out in the wild, so the best thing that you can do is hold your hand just below the meat, above the flames, and if you can indefinitely and comfortably leave your hand below the meat, then the, the temperature is just about right. And then, like I said, we are drying the meat, we're not cooking it, and smoke allows uh, allows us to dry it. The smoke is going to rise up through the meat and carry away any of the moisture you know, along with a, a little bit of heat and any spices, salt, uh, 
and whatever else we put on top of that meat for flavoring. So this is our hide from the goat. We let it uh, sit in that lye bath for two days. Uh, and then I, afterwards, uh, I rinsed it off in the stream. As you can see here, this hair is coming off pretty easily. Just pulls right out. Uh, but to make the job a little bit easier and where we can get clear down to the flesh, I took one of the bones and he's got the larger piece. I got a little piece that, that split off, but I made it into a tool where we can, a fleshing tool where we can pull the, the hair off a lot easier. Um, once we're done with this side with the hair, we're gonna flip it over and actually flesh off any of the, the fat and the meat and, and uh, any of the, the connective tissue that was on it from when we cleaned it before. So we get all the hair and the meat, or at least most of the meat removed. We'll take and string that hide up on a drying rack, as you can see here. We poke holes in the hide every few inches and then string that paracord around. This does take a little bit of time, but uh, it allows you to stretch that hide as tight as you can get it. Now you can see there's a few holes in the hide. If you were making uh, clothing for that, you would stitch up those holes, uh, but we're just going to make cordage out of this. <clears throat> Let the raw hide dry out for a few days. And then I went ahead and cut a circle out of it, made this into a spiral. We're going to make this into cordage. I've got to let this soak in some water for a little while and so it'll moisten up and then we'll stretch it out and then we'll twist it. And hopefully we'll be able to use this cordage for the bows that we made. I let that rawhide cordage soak in the water for about an hour. And I've got it stretched out here behind me. It's got a pin to this stump right here and then out to that shelter behind me. It stretched out to about 30 feet. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to roll it in one direction so it kind of tightens up that cordage and adds a little strength. We'll let it dry out. Um, if I wanted it really strong, I would do a reverse twist method um, like some of the other primitive cordage you've seen, uh, done in my other videos with plant cordage. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get to work on this. I'll probably take a stick and tie a stick on the end of that so it's easy to twist since I got such a long piece of cordage here and then I'll show you the end result here in a little bit. So here's the end of the result of that rope after twirling it. It is going to be a little stiff and crunchy at first, but if I continue to work it and roll it around and bend it and shape it, it'll eventually soften up. Okay, here's the goat cordage, rawhide cordage, and uh, close to its final form. That's it. That's all we're going to show you for the goat. If you want to learn how to process a goat, come on out to class and we'll show you everything that you saw in this video.